um, going to talk about um, in this fasting part five, the benefits of fasting. We have benefits to fasting. You know, we don't just fast and feel all terrible because our heads are hurting, trying to get rid of caffeine, sugar, starches, and all that stuff. Hallelujah. Now, in uh, Job 22, 21, we said about the flesh um, versus the spirit. And in fasting, we said, now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Other translation says, be at peace and you'll prosper. Thereby good will come to you, great good. And so uh, the Lord is inviting us to acquaint ourselves with him. And the way to do it is to shut out the world for a few days or even a half a day. Go to a fast, do a fast everything. Fast food, period. Just drink water. And, you know, as... as many hours of the day or days as you want but acquaint yourself with god during that time right. acquaint yourself with god you know god understands our frame he knows what we are made of and he knows where, how busy we can be especially for the businessmen yeah. they're going 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 the lawyers look how busy the lawyers are and doctors are especially the er doctors they hardly have a minute but, you know, they take a minute and just do a fast to consecrate themselves. E even that little bit, consecrate yourself and, and, and hear from God and sometimes just worshiping God. In the midst of you worshiping God, he'll come to you and give you the answers you need. Just like that. He will give you the answer to the puzzle. He'll solve the puzzle for you. He will break through for you beyond what you even ask or even think. Hallelujah. Oh, there's just a mist of anointing in here. Hallelujah. Wow. Glory to God. Well, the Lord gave us a word at, at prayer. Pastor was praying. Uh, you were saying, may the people of the church just break through. That may they receive breakthrough. And the Lord immediately said, the church will be unrecognizable. So I'm, I'm taking for this church, but I can see now. The ecclesia will be unrecognizable. Uh, I was telling Pastor earlier, say there's 10 people in the church, just because I have 10 hands. And each one has a major breakthrough, a major breakthrough, huh? 10 fingers. <laughs> ten fingers. <laughs> so uh, 10 times 10 fingers. And this one has a breakthrough, and this one has a breakthrough, this one has a breakthrough. Everyone has major, major breakthroughs. Amen. Can you imagine the atmosphere of the church? The worship is deeper the word is more profound in their soul. They, they are on fire for God, and they're like, let me have them. Let me knock out these demons and, you know, break through. So the church will be unrecognizable. It's like, aren't those, those people that just would sing songs and just go and, you know. Even churches that are, shall I say, uh, <laughs> what's that word? Uh, 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 yeah, seeker-friendly is old-fashioned. Or fellowship, places of fellowship. <laughs> You know, the fluff, fluff, <laughs> fluff, fluff, <laughs> someone's putting some words in my mouth here, <laughs> fluff, fluff, seeker friendly, you know, even those will be unrecognizable because God is getting a hold of each individual. Amen. It only takes a spark to get that fire going, amen? So let's go to Isaiah 58, and um, I'm going to pull up the Amplified because I love the Amplified, the classic Amplified is real good, but we have to start out. Um, we have to start out with the bad to get to the good, right? Amen. <laughs> so, uh, if you want the benefits, this is biblical fasting. There's, I hear now there's a lot of fasting, like, you know, um, weight training, do some fasting and do a cleanse, you know. There's fastings out there and, and uh, it's very, it's promoted and recognized. I'm like, what does, the, what does the world know about fasting? I didn't think they even knew about fasting. But this is biblical fasting, Isaiah 58. Homework tonight and tomorrow, you can review it again. Isaiah 58, all of it. Hallelujah. All of it. It's only 11 verses, 14 verses. And that will tell you so much what you need to know. So if you want benefits, you need to stay away from the acts of the flesh. That's what we covered uh, um, last Sunday. 
The acts of the flesh is enmity against God. The flesh, the carnality wants something and doesn't want to please God. God wants this, you want this, and you're like, big clash. But if you want benefits, you need to stay away from the acts of the flesh. If you wonder why things are not working out as you have fasted, that is possibly because it was not done properly. Well, I fasted, and don't, don't throw in the towel, just, you know, take heart. You'll find out how fast can be, can be done properly. If your fasting ends in quarreling and strife, then you cannot expect your voice to be heard. Ouchie. <laughs> and so this is why you must protect your environment while you fast. You don't want to get in any quarrels. You don't want to get in any in disagreements, you know. Protect your environment. Put yourself in a bubble for a while. You see someone not like, okay, walk the other way, walk the other way. And so you need to get to a quiet place. Uh, don't get around people that don't have a positive impact on your life. Don't let any garbage in your ears. Ooh, have you ever heard someone nearby you in an earshot and they're just a cussing away? It's like, ooh, your spirit is like, oh, walk the other way, walk the other way, go to the other register at the store, whatever. And so, you know, don't let any garbage in your ears. It, it, it's, it, just, it just messes up your fast. You're like, I'm trying to hear from God, you know. So let's look at Isaiah uh, 5 through 11. shows you the guidelines. But let's start with uh, why when we have fasted. Yeah, let me, there is another um, translation to this. Uh, and this is in, I'm going to go here just a second. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Okay, Isaiah 58, 3 and 4. I didn't write that down here. I wrote it somewhere else. I wrote it here. Okay, so I'm going to read this translation. It says, um, you can follow along with me in your translation. Isaiah 58, verse 3 and 4. Why have we fasted, they say, <clears throat> excuse me, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Verse 4, your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. So this is what it is saying. There we put ourselves, have you ever been in, put in a position to where all of a sudden you're in the middle of strife? It's like, what just happened there? I was just walking along and saying something simple, and then all of a sudden it's like, how did I get into this? That, that's the devil setting a trap. He's tricky and he's sneaky and he's deceitful, and he'll set you up in a trap all the time. And so this is uh, what, um, what the Lord is saying how to fast properly because there's, um, there's, a, there's some things that he wants us to know. Let's go to verse uh, 5, and I'm going to read this to Amplified. It's just too good, and I know you're going to want to be underlining your, your Bible. It says, um, there are several thens, verse um, 8, says then it starts with that then like if you do get rid of all that strife and everything there's a then if you do that then is the effect of it verse 8 says then verse 9 says then uh, there is another scripture and verse 14 says then so if you do what he says then such as such would happen so verse of verses 5 it says in the Amplified, I'm going to read this in Amplified. Hallelujah. It says, is such a fast as yours as I have, what I have chosen a day for man to humble himself with sorrow in his soul? Is true fasting merely mechanical? Is it only to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him to indicate a condition of the heart that he does not have? <laughs> They're acting like they're fasting with, this, you know, covering their head. Will you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Verse 6. 
Rather, is this not is not this the fast which I have chosen? To loose the bond of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, that you may break every enslaving yoke. I love it when Pastor was praying about breakthrough today. Because it says it all here. You know, you know, loose that bond of wickedness and the bands of the yoke, let the press go free. And every enslaving yoke that's got us by the neck. Pastor, one time um, in the early 90s, he, um, I don't know if it was a, it was a time of just, just, there was just so much anointing in the church, so much anointing. So it, it really matters where you go. And, uh, and this anointing was so strong that one day um, the pastor was uh, just in bed, and he, I think he woke up in the middle of the night, and he heard, um, uh, this is how I describe it, if you, where there used to be how they would uh, bell the hay in these uh, real thin metal wires, metal and, uh, and they bind them real tight with these metal wires and you cut it, it goes boing, it springs up boing, and it makes a noise and so he said that he felt something just come off of him like like those bands those those metal bands broke and he heard them bing bing and they were just coming off of him remember and you know and i actually saw him transform in the spirit and become stronger and deeper in uh, in the spirit living a holier life he was consecrate it because those bands were broken off and so this is what fasting does he lets the oppressive you're oppressed he lets you go free he cuts it off and that the every enslaving yoke every bond of you can't stay away from wickedness this is what's happening you need to fast because he will break it uh, and then let's jump over to um, verse 8 it just talks about, uh, verse 7 talks about, you know, feeding the hungry and homeless. Verse 8 says, then, there's that word again, then shall your light break forth like the morning and your healing, in parentheses, your restoration and the power of a new life shall spring forth speedily. I mean fast, I guess the minute you break your fast, immediately you'll have uh, a healing Healing, what's needed so much in America, I guess all over the world, is healing in the mental arena, in the mind. Yes, yes. Healing in the mind. Yes. And, and it says that your righteousness, your rightness, your justice, and your right relationship with God will, shall go before you, conducting you to peace and prosperity. I, I like that because... Um, it, it simply says in, in the regular Bible, your righteousness shall go before you. But in that word righteousness, it's peace and prosperity. You're put in a place of righteousness that you have such supernatural peace and such a blessing of God that it's prosperity. You know, um, Abraham counted it to, uh, to righteousness. He, he counted the word of God that he would ble be a blessing to many nations, it will be a father of many nations, and that they will be very blessed. And so he counted unto righteousness, that word of God. So your righteousness is part of the word prosperity. And the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Amen. So we put on the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, shoes, the gospel peace. Well, guess what's in the rear guard? The Bible doesn't say about the... the, the um, all the uh, weapons of your warfare. He says it here. He doesn't talk about the rear guard because he says, God is covering your back. That's where that saying is going. I got your back. <laughs> you know, have you seen warriors? You know, they're back to back. This one is fighting here and this one is fighting there. So the enemy can't go near them at all. But the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory. Um, my granddaughter, Claire, she described what I see. She had a dream, and she was describing the, this, the, the glory that reflected of the Lord, of the Lord, of his glory in the, in the colors, um, you know, like sheer colors. And uh, that's the glory of the Lord. So his glory is covering you. He's got your back. Amen. 
And then there's that then word again. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. Here I am. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. He says, here I am. If you take away from your mess the yokes of oppression, wherever you find them, the finger pointed in scorn toward the oppressed or the godly, and every form of false, harsh, unjust, and wicked speaking. So he's saying, if you do that, then you have all these benefits. Amen. All these benefits. You know, verse um, 10, it says, if you pour out that which you sustain your own life for the hungry and satisfy the need of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your obscurity and gloom become like noonday. Hallelujah. And oh, I love uh, verse 11. And the Lord shall continually guide you and satisfy you in drought and in dry places and make, your, make, your, make strong your bones. Amen. When you get over 40 or over 50, start claiming that scripture. He makes my bones strong. Amen. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose, uh, whose waters fell not. And so there's, there's just so much. I mean, this, we, could, we could preach a week on this, just that. And so that shows the word um, then when you do, do it fasting the right way. Then. And it's the benefits of this then. Here are the benefits. When you do that, and, and there's just so much more. The benefits of fasting. I'm going to give you very quickly 17 benefits. Can we do 17 very quickly? <laughs> Number one, the benefits of fasting. Spiritual discipline. Because it, you, you want to go into the kitchen about 15 times a day, but it'll give you spiritual discipline. I mean, Pastor Robert makes that coffee in the morning. And I'm like, I'm going to get a cup of green tea. <laughs> and I'm drinking it. <laughs> but it's spiritual discipline. It's like, okay, and I'm going to read the word. I am going to hear from God. Sometimes you just have to tell your flesh, get in line, girl or man. <laughs> Number one, spiritual discipline. Number two, increase spiritual capacity. Things are downloaded downloaded like man i understand this understand i understand so so many things that it's hard for me to to speak it out or put it into words or to write it out it's like i got it kind of like a computer download i got it an increased spiritual capacity number three a clear sober mind clear sober mind number four a pure heart and mind see your mind has to be pure too and your heart has to be pure too. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so that'll be pure, pure, pure. Number five, hunger for God and his word. You'll have a hunger. You want to know more. You want to know who was related to who in the Bible. You want to know the begots. You want to know the, 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 the defeats, the lessons learned, the, uh, the, the history that was made, uh, the wars that were won, the miracles. I mean, you just start hungering for God and his word. Number six, physical health. <clears throat> we're going to go over that in a little bit. Your, your physical health, I can't wait for us to have a, the illustration that we'll be having soon next Sunday about what the body is actually going through. It's very, very interesting uh, how you will get physical health. Why? Because you're just drinking a lot of water. You are not putting junk in you anymore. Not things too salty, nor things too sweet, nor things that are just not good, not too greasy. Your physical health. You will have physical health. Um, next benefit of fasting, number seven, is loss of excess weight. Now, the fast is not a diet. You don't fast so that you can lose weight. Like, remember, Pastor was saying, how much weight did you lose? Remember, we served people, how much weight did you lose? I lost this, you know. You know? Uh, I'll never forget uh, the, just listening to uh, uh, the church. It's quite a large church that were in a fast. I don't know how long it was. I think it was a week or something, seven days. And they were so excited because they were shrinking. But that is not the reason for the fast. <laughs> that is not the reason for it. 
I remember, I remember brother, this one brother, he, he said that, I can't wait, uh, we're off, I'm looking at the time, I'm going to get a steak, and he ate him a steak after seven day fast, and it made him sick. He was so sick, he's like, he couldn't handle it because you, you, you can't just go and get a, st a steak or a burger after a long fast, right? And we'll cover that later. Um, number eight, purified body. You're purifying your body. Your lymph nodes are being cleaned. You're purifying your body from things that, that God would not want you to be having in your body. Number nine, spiritual freedom. Spiritual freedom, things like, man, I just don't understand this word. I just, I just don't feel like it. Just, I read this and I read it a thousand it's not, times. It's not meaning anything. Spiritual freedom. Fasting will break that. And you can, then things will just, just come alive for you in the Word of God. Number 10, physical freedom. You'll have the physical ability to pop out of bed. And you'll have strength to work if you work um, manual labor. Physical freedom. Uh, number 11, a spirit of giving. All of a sudden, you can't stop from giving. There's a spirit of giving that comes over you. And you want to give, you want to give, you want to give to your brother and sister. You want to you know, give uh, to every program in the church. Spirit of giving comes over you. Number 12, your light shines. And that's true. You can tell the a glowing of someone when they've been fasting. Number 13, protection by God. When you're in a fast, the devil stay away from you. You are protected by God because they see something in you. They see that you're very sensitive in the spirit. You're very... Uh, You've been consecrating your, your life to God and the devil. It scares him. That's why he fights you so much while you're starting to fast. <laughs> He's like, we need to, you know, he did it to Jesus. My goodness. And so uh, uh, your light shines. Protection by God. Number 14, uh, answers to prayer. You start getting your prayers answered when you, when you fast. You're wondering why, why I Pray for this and pray for this. You'll get answers to your prayer. And he'll tell you why you didn't before, very simply. Number 15, intimacy with God. This is the main focus of prayer, is to finding yourself, getting a time in your life, in your year even, to get intimate with God. Because once you do that in fast, you want to fast every month. You want to keep on fasting. Intimacy with God. And that's what God desires. He desires intimacy um, with us. Number 16, increased retention capacity. Yes, that's what I want. Increased retention capacity. When there's things that are, you're being taught that you can recall it immediately. What did I te teach on Sunday? Amen. Anybody tell me what I taught on Sunday? I think, uh, <laughs> Pastor drilled us one day and it was all you heard was crickets. <laughs> we need to put them in a fast. Increased retention capacity. There's some times that you have some complicated things at work, and you need to learn to this, 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 and they've trained you. And then you think, ah, oh, what is that? What is that? I know I'm supposed to do that. You know, when you're in a fast, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. And um, I've been noticing that God's been doing that to me lately. I was like, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit remind you of stuff. Number 17, and that's the last one, spiritual sensitivity. Spiritual sensitivity. That's almost like spiritual freedom. Uh, spiritual freedom, I mean, you're free to dance. You're free to come to the altar if you want. You're free to raise your hands. And I, I remember when I first got saved, uh, I wanted to lift my hands and just something would stop me and I, and I would go like this. Actually, it was the King's Church. Pastor Till said, you can open your hands and lift them up. And I would just, I, I could, I just, I don't know why. I, I, I wasn't free. And then finally, little by little, I would go like this when my fists were still up. And then finally, I just, you know, until I let go from that. And I had spiritual freedom. Amen. Now, spiritual sensitivity is you're very sensitive. The Lord will give you a word immediately. You're sensitive not to go that way, not to go this way, to do this, not to do that. Stop doing this in your life. Start doing this in your life. Spiritual sensitivity. Amen. Amen. So now the requirements of fasting are, it's 
These are the requirements. It's like a must. It not, it's not just a missed meal. You have to understand. It's not just a missed meal. It is not a diet. It demands replacing meals with reading the word and prayer. You're feeding your spirit. You're disciplining yourself to hear from God deeper, clearer, and just being intimate with him. So it, it does demand replacing the meals with the word of God. You're not just replacing the meal and just going and going these hours fasting. You have to re replace, say the body is accustomed. Say you eat breakfast at 8, you eat lunch at noon, you eat dinner at 5 or 6. And you know those are the times, what, what, whatever hours you eat, your stomach will be growling because it's conditioned. So when you feel those times, 12 o'clock noon comes, well, you replace that with, with the Word of God. You're replacing your meal. This is the best meal replacement plan. Sorry, dieting dieters out there that take the powders and all that. This is the ultimate meal replacement, not a shake. Not a shake. Maybe a Holy Ghost shake, but not a physical shake. And it demands, the requirements of fasting, demands dedicating time for meditation on him and his word. So sometimes we can read and read, but then sometimes you have to stop and just meditate. Just close your eyes and say, I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. What are you saying? Am I making this mistake? Lord, show me what you want me to know. Just talk with him. Say, God, I don't understand this. Can you clarify? Could you clarify some things? And you're meditating on him and his word. Because you dedicated that time. Sometimes we're so busy, busy, busy. Now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And, I mean, we can't do that anymore. <laughs> Those were baby prayers. But we are mature now. We have to grow to be mature Christians. Hallelujah. So this is concentration. Con yeah, concentration. <laughs> Concentrate on your fasting. This is consecrating, consecration. You're consecrating your body, your will. Remember what you think, what you feel, and what you want. All of that, put it aside and focus on what God wants, what God thinks, what God feels. Amen? Amen. So fasting makes your brain sharp. When you are meditating on him, he's downloading in you. Things that all of a sudden you'll just speak up and you're like, well, where'd that come from? It was the Holy Ghost. Amen. It makes your brain sharp. You can understand. Like he says, my light shall break forth like the morning. Man, light, my light, my understanding. My, I mean, you're your own amplified Bible right there. No brain fog. <laughs> no brain fog. I love that. Yeah. No brain fog. So fasting makes your brain sharp. Amen. And you even get spiritual songs. Oh, you're just taking some time to praise him. Oh, and you just want to praise him. And all of a sudden you say, Oh, the blessing of the Lord. Oh, I desire the blessing, Lord. You're so precious. Oh, hallelujah. You're better than gold. And then just these words will just come forth. And, you know, it's because you're, you're meditating on him and his word. Hallelujah. So we're going to give you um, some fasting guidelines, and we're almost done. Fasting guidelines, turn off the TV and other distractions. Amen. Yes, Lord. IPhones. <laughs> iPhones, other, those are other distractions. Your iPhones, your iPad, your computer, I mean, just, you know, I say click a key. Oh. Click. <laughs> click. So we had, what, what they're saying is turn off outside sources, the TV. You don't have to be hearing the news all morning while you're, you know, you're trying to read your word and the TV's on. You know, turn it off. Number two, fast yeasts, yeasts like yeast bread, meats, and sugars. And at the very end of your fast, if you're going to a, a, like a long-term fast or even a three-day fast, Add veggies at the end of your fast. Start eating clean. 
the end of your fast. Check with your doctor if you're on medication. Check with your doctor. Can I go without food? Because some medications require you have to take, be taken with a meal. No, this is very important, no acids, no coffee, no black tea, no sodas, no pineapple juice, or juices that have strong acid. Drink plenty of water. Water is the best. Water, water, water. It cleans you thoroughly. Water is necessary to clean your lymph nodes out of your system. You've got to clean those lymph nodes. Coconut water is the best. Herbal teas are okay, but herbal teas have to be uh, non-caffeinated. Well, that's okay. Uh, the next is no social media, if at all possible. <laughs> Miles Monroe says this. You know why the reason you can't cast out demons is because you're, uh, you're on the internet too long. How can you cast out demons if you're on the internet so long? You want to cast out demons and you're going to have to give up the internet and focus on the, the Lord and the word of God and start fasting. That's why the disciples couldn't cast out a demon. And Jesus, you know, he, he, he went onto the mountain to pray and was tempted of the devil and he came down. I mean, it was easy, like, get up, get up, be healed, stand up. You know, it was easy for him because he was flowing in that realm of the spirit. And so um, after you have fasted the seventh day, freedoms, total freedoms are felt in your life, in your body, in your mind. In every, every realm, freedoms are felt. And this is, um, I like how Isaiah 58, 11 says, The Lord will con guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. And you shall be like a watered garden, a spring of water whose waters do not fail. And so these freedoms are felt. Strong bones. Refreshing, you're refreshed by the water, and he starts. You start seeing that he's guiding you, and you start leading that guiding continuously. So you feel that freedom. After 14 days, you're saying, Pastor Christine, you're not asking us to fast 14 days. I'm just giving you a teaching on fasting, and you know, unless Pastor calls us to, to a fast, but you have to know this. At least try what you can. I'm just giving you the teaching of it. So after 14 days, <laughs> you are completely free, no hindrances whatsoever. Nothing will bother you. You give a deaf ear to the TV. You give a deaf ear to people cussing. You, you could see people baking a cake right in front of you and eating it and tempting you, and it's like, I don't even want that. It doesn't bother you. The smell of steak and barbecue cooking doesn't bother you. It, you are completely free of hindrances. Let's look at verse 13 and 14. I like this. And we're going to conclude with this. It says, it says, uh, we're going to go back to 12, but look, verse 13. You are so completely free from hindrances that it's easy for you to turn away your foot from the Sabbath. No, it says, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, not finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. So when you are completely free from hindrances, it's easy for you to, to have a proper Sabbath pleasing to the Lord. You know, it, it just hurts us. This hurts me and Pastor. It just makes us feel so bad. It grieves us when we hear that parents are taking their children to Sunday morning soccer games. There's a whole list lineup of soccer games. We had a, a, a family that, that their child couldn't come to children's church because they had to go to a soccer game. And I thought, what is more important, the word of God or a soccer game? 
and, and it's like on the Sabbath day. And so when you're completely free, you'll never do that. You'll start honoring that day. You'll rest on that day. You'll sit by the lake and just say, oh, Father God, I thank you for this water. I thank you for the beautiful clouds and the blue sky. And, you know, just, just resting your mind, resting your soul, take a long nap, which we all like because, I mean, there's something about Sunday afternoon naps. They're deeper, aren't they? Yeah. And you hardly can wake up. Hallelujah. And so, and then in then verse 14, it says, um, you, uh, Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. So it's easy for you because you are, are, it's easy for you to please God because you're free, you're co completely free from hindrances. And then you may be one of those that repair the breach, the breaches. Let's look at verse 12. Those from among you, those from among you, it doesn't say everyone of, among you or all of you shall, it says those, there are those from among you that shall build the old waste places. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. This is very deep. You could just open up and take a big study in that and read all your references. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in, or some say the restorer of paths to dwell in. You are restoring someone's path. That means God can use you. If you live a fasted lifestyle, then Perhaps you're one of those that are raising up the old or building up the old waste places and raising up the foundations of many generations. A foundation has to be solid and strong and some are broken. Families are broken because the foundation is broken. And it, and it says, uh, you shall build the old waste places. Waste places, things, lives, people that are it's, it's a waste place. They're broken. And he'll use you to raise that up. It says, of many generations. So maybe generations past, the gospel was preached to your great, 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 great grandparents. And they had a strong foundation. But then it's been destroyed throughout the times, you know, uh, the 1400s, the 1500s, the 1600s, the 1800s, 1900s, 20, 21st century. And so you will... Raise up those foundation of those generations that served the Lord. Amen. There was a lot of uh, uh, Holy Ghost awakenings and revivals back in the day. Way back in the day. Powerful. I can't even imagine being in one of those. I've witnessed very few of miracles of revival compared to what is being, was being said uh, in history. And it says, you shall be called the repair of the breach. I remember the Lord told me uh, many years ago, I had to be 19 or 20 years old, the Lord told me, you are the repairer of the breach. You are, you are to restore. You have an anointing to restore. And I thought, for years I thought, what does that mean? I have no clue. Repair of what breach? What breach? Things that are broken. Families that are broken. Have you, have you noticed there's some families, they just can't see eye to eye, they just can't get together. They just can't. But yet when you come into town, all of a sudden, you have no clue who's been fighting and who hadn't talked to each other. Right? Right? Pastor Robert goes into to town, he can go up north, and everybody's getting together. You know, we can go to California, and everybody's getting together. As soon as we leave, they're all, you know, <laughs> separated. But, you know, we are perhaps... One of those that are called. We are all called to the ministry of reconciliation, to reconciliate the lost back to Christ. And so there are those from among you that shall build the old waste places. I just keep saying this over and over because I love this scripture. Because there are broken lives, broken families, broken generations. And yet God will use you to repair that breach. A breach is that gap, repair it, be the, be the glue, cement things together, the cracks, the, the foundations, the way, put it back the way it's supposed to be. 
but you do it by fasting. You need that power. You need the power. We talked about it Sunday. You need that power for a proper Christian life, success after success. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. And the way to get that supernatural power working strong and deep in your life is to fast. And you restore the pathway or the streets, the restore of the streets to dwell in. You restore those pathways. You know, God is, is so awesome. He loves us so much. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. I like that song. He makes a way where there ain't no way. <laughs> he makes a way. He, ma- he always makes a way. And so the... Um, I'm actually remembering a, a vision or dream that Pastor Robert... Uh, had that he was um, putting rebarb. There's old old building. You know how they uh, they have the forms, and the Lord told him put rebarb in there. It's not strong enough. And so I started remembering this this scripture. He had a and he was putting rebarb in there, getting ready for the concrete, because concrete without rebarb could crack easily. Shifts, moves, cracks. You need that rebar to make it strong. Rebarb is steel. There's steel rods that go this way and sometimes this way. And so the Lord had showed you that. Do you remember that? And so I'm going to read this in the Amplified Classic. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt, and you shall raise up the foundations of buildings that have laid, have laid waste for many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in or the restore of paths to dwell in. And so this is the greatest thing that can come forth out of your fast, is to use you. He wants to use you. And you say, little old me, little old me. I remember one of my brothers is with the Lord now, went to be with the Lord, a couple of them, and... Three, uh, three brothers that have been, went to be with the Lord. And one of them had said, I love it when you come to town because you bring such a peace. You and Robert bring such a peace. That was the biggest compliment I could ever have heard. And I thought, well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And that's what I want you to hear, that you're a blessing when you come to my house. You're a blessing when you come to the city. You're a blessing when you, when you come in to work. You're a blessing because sometimes the anointing is so strong on your life. You don't have to be called as a five-fold minister, but just being under the, under the umbrella of the Lord, that anointing is in you, and you walk into places, and people sense it. And breakthroughs happen. People, and it's going to happen more in a way, in the great, great awakening, the last awakening. People are going to say, tell me about Jesus. Tell me about Jesus. I mean, there's something about you. You're just glowing. We've we've had that told us, you know, we could be at a rest area or traveling at a stop or an airline or whatever. There's just something about you guys. You guys are glowing. How does the world know that we are glowing? It's a sin scene. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. God is so wonderful. He did this all. I thought, how am I going to finish these? Hallelujah. I don't want to tell you how many points I had. I just spoke them. (laughs) But we have benefits of biblical fasting. You want breakthroughs, right? You want your minds to be clear. And anointed. You want to be like Superman. That's the way I can think of it. Superman, nothing can stop him. He just get up and fly. He'll go in outer space or into the earth. You know, why not us? We are better than Superman, like the the children's church song. Jesus is uh, better than Superman, (laughs) better than Spider Man. I love those songs that the children are learning because Jesus is our all in all. And he wants to use his body. 
but we are being held back by the enemy, the enemies of our own mind. I want, I feel, I think. And he wants to do away with all of that so you could submit to yourself with what he wants. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we want to be more like you. You fasted for 40 days, Father God. You're not calling us to fast that long. You're just calling us to fast, to break, break the deeds of the flesh, the carnality that's enmity against God. You want us to make breakthroughs so that we can be the repairers of the breach. All the benefits are good and fine, but Lord, when we repair the breach, it's repairing the foundations generations old generations from generation that have had broken lives, generations of struggles and families, perhaps generations of poverty. The Father, you come to set the captive free. And Father, we desire to live a fasted lifestyle, a fasted lifestyle so that we can be totally and completely free free of our own worst enemy of ourselves. We thank you, Father.